Hey, everybody. Welcome to It's Real with Jordan and Demi. Our guest today is one of Australia's most beloved performers. She's a singer. She's an actor. She can do a lot of different things. Uh, she's got new music coming out. Please welcome Delta Goodrum. How you doing, Delta? Uh, hi, team. I'm really good. How are you? We're good. We're good. Happy to have you on here from Australia. You are the third Australian guest we had on following really? G Flip and Tim Minchin. Who are these Australians? <laughs> yes. Shout out to me. all the Australians. You uh, love accents on the show. Yeah. Demi's, Demi's, Demi loves accents. She's like an accent queen. She loves different <laughs> accents. So, um, That's and even though she's from the Bronx, she does not have a New York accent. So I do. Well, it definitely over the years, just like with all the traveling kind of like went away, but it's, it's there deep down. Love it's the there. Australian though. <laughs> have you have either of you ever been here? I have never been to Australia, no. So uh first of all, I was listening to Hearts on the Run before the show. I feel like I should have been working out while I was listening to it. I felt like I should be training for the Olympics. Uh <laughs> such good energy on that song. Um, and it's been a few years since you made an, an album of original songs. Um, so what, what's the energy behind this? Is, is this whatever this is part? I'm sure this is going to be part of a, a bigger album or something. Is it going to be that kind of like energetic pop music or is it going to be more that the, those ballads that you're known for? Well, I think that, you know, sort of I'd been on the, when the, when the world had sort of opened up again and we were back road and, and touring and last year my, my whole year was just filled with tours and um and I and you know doing live shows and I kind of had that energy we were just on the run we were like we were going we were we were the band was 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 coming together and we just um kind of wrote song from a place of of just saying like when you think you can your boundaries like you're in a, you're in a marathon you're running you think you can't go any further this song's kind of that motivation that says like keep going don't give up you know just break your own boundaries and your own limits and that's kind of where I guess it was written from and also just when, when I was in the video producing it we were just you know just kind of wanting it to feel super live and what is the energy live well, that's that's really that's really different. yes I'm a, I'm first and foremost I love a ballad I grew up making a piano girl first and foremost but um I think just kind of that I also just love to rock have fun with the audience and get a and I guess I just want some of those and those songs that just give so much, much energy, you know? Yeah. And you originally performed it on Australian Idol to widespread acclaim. Everyone was like, all right, Delta's back. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't feel like I've ever gone anywhere. I definitely feel like I've been um, consistently the first up. But I, um, but I, but I, you know, getting to do those, you know, I, I did this as a coach for nine years over here. And, um, and it was, a, you know, sort of, I, I, I always love, sort of new talent as well and, and love seeing talented people. And I'm always sort of a part of those uh, shows. I always love kind of getting there and, and cheering everyone on too. And and this thing to have a sing with my friends there and just, you know, it's great. You know, I we've had several uh, contestants from singing competition shows on, but we never had a judge on. And the one thing that like every judge has to find is balance of being you know, mm. you gotta you gotta do your job. You gotta eliminate people, but you also don't want to be a jerk. So, um, right. how have you when you were doing that? How did you kind of find that balance of of being constructive with your criticism, but also like you know being encouraging to the contestants? Um, you know, you definitely had to you definitely have to learn a uh, um, to be truthful and fearless and kind. My my, I would never. I want everyone's dreams to come true. I don't have a you know, I, I'm very good for me. Like I, I stay in my lane and I, I do what I do. I'm always up against myself wanting to be better than I was yesterday. So for me, the, the heart space that I would sit in in the red chair was always just, I was always on their side. You know, I want no one, I, I want to be entertained. I want you to do a great performance. And for me, it's it's no one to say that they, that they can't do whatever they want to do in this world, but it was you know, in that moment, if their energy rose to that occasion or you had to be truthful that in this moment, this is where this journey ends, but it's it's always up to you. It's always up to you to make that moment happen. And I I guess that's why I stayed there nine years on, on like I said, a decade. I did 150 episodes. We, um, uh, But again, I'd had a whole life prior to that, but I always went into it trying to find that balance between technical and emotional and, and 
I was always way too invested. I always, I always, my heart was always um way too, uh, oh, God, come on. Yeah. <laughs> We've had, like, a few guests that have been on um, that have come from American Idol, America's Got Talent. And one thing I wonder is, like, some of them have never even played a show prior to going on, a t like, a, a series like yeah. that, right? Has anyone ever had any, like, freak out moments or stage fright that you had to be like, hey, calm down? Mm. Like, oh, you know what I mean? A hundred percent. But but I think that that is also, you know, being an artist, uh, learning to have that skill, dealing with our adrenaline and dealing with our emotions comes with also the task at hand to be a pro and to do what you do and, and go out there and connect with people on stage through song. And I... Um, I, I take it as part of the part of it's a it's a part of what you have to learn and do. So um, I always kind of you know it's the same with when I'm as an artist I always get butterflies. My always um, you know my very first when I first started and I you know my first album had just broken and the first like awards show like our TV award a, a TV show called Neighbors and I'd got the best new talent and I was about 17 years old. And I swear you, I was like this. I was like shivering and shaking with nerves and my, my whole body. And I spoke for way too long and it was mortifying. Uh, but I ended up with dreams who can come true. It was, it was, it, it still haunts me to this day. But what I did, I started, then, then my life took many, many turns and I realized that it was just, you know, this is all this is all entertainment and music and 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 the arts, and it's not meant to be that scary. It's meant to be fun. It's meant to be from a place of love. So, yeah, when you were younger, when you hit it, you had all these number one singles. You're on this hugely popular show, Neighbors. Um, did you think you handled all the attention and the fame like you wanted to, or looking back, are you like, I wish I would have handled something differently? No, I think I, I'm. I'm I'm proud of that. I've always stayed true to my intention. I don't think I am. Um, whilst some of it's I would have loved to have done better, of course. Like, but I do think um, I do think that uh, you know I've done the best I could throughout. You know, yeah. I've always tried to lead with uh, with kindness and with love in my heart. That you know, everybody, the different moments of phenomenon, or when we've had some crazy moments where you know um, where the album has done some amazing wonderful things and like lightning in a bottle and I've always accepted that they're all just moments as well and not one thing defines me I'm always moving forward you know absolutely what was the did you did you have a moment when you realized how famous you were did you uh, um uh, a crowd that overwhelmed you or a, a public appearance where you're like oh man I I'm I'm a big deal now um well, it's funny. I don't think I'll ever feel like I'm, I'm, I don't, I, I, um, I don't know how much of my story, but I, I will say there was one moment where the first album had just started and they were doing thing called, called indoors, you know, you're going and signing at the shopping centers. It was before Twitter and Instagram and before people could, you know, access you and have a lot more um, personable. And I remember being at the shopping center and I said, uh, oh, you know, I was, it was, I think I had my third number one. The album was number one at the time. And I was like, oh, is anybody out there? Like, did anybody show up? And then I remember this look on the people's face and they were like, yeah, they showed up. And mm. I remember the doors opening and I remember going, oh my God. And it was the first time I went, whoa, like, this is, mm. this is, this is, um, this is real, the, the taking home the album. And I, and I, it was the first time I saw it physically. I had shut down this shopping centre and it was a real, you know, it was, that was the first time I ever went, oh, well, the music's taking on a life of its own and that's, that's cool. Um, but then I, uh, I, I, I don't know, again, my, my story had twists and turns after that and it was a pretty unique experience. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we, won't, we won't go down the, the, the darker path of, 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 of that. But uh, I'm curious go ahead, about, Danielle. like, the duet, like... Artist, what's that? Oh, I was going to say it's not dark in the sense that, like, um, you know, when you you're when here you, today, I'm, so hey, oh my god, are you kidding me? I'm, I'm pumped. I am. Um, I this is just a part of what makes us so having having a number one and getting diagnosed with cancer at the same time is a very is a very um, unique path, obviously. Uh, 
I've I've been able to have, uh, but that moment in 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 its in its moment has been able to have a lot of good come out of it, and that's and that is what you know what we're able to do now. I want to talk about acting. Like, which one? I know you probably can't just like pick one, but like, if you had to pick one, oh, what's your favorite? Like, what is what? You know what I mean? Like, what's your favorite? I, I mean, I, I look at it holistically, like it's all connected. You know, like I love, yeah. I love when we jump into a show. I love like getting to do the, um, the rom com and the movies, and and I love, uh, I, I don't know. I just see it as kind of, all, it's all. I grew up doing the arts. That's it. Like I, I love, I love all of it combined. We might- the one thing I could say, like about, I can only watch scary movies or rom coms, right? So I love right, a good, if, yeah, that's the only thing like my attention span can go for. Let's talk about that yeah. rom-com. Um, behind the scenes, like, what is it like? What What's it really like shooting a rom-com? It's um, quick, right? It's a pretty quick shooting schedule. Pretty quick and it, it's a lot of fun. You know, like I, I we were in a great location in um, Airlie Beach in Australia and had a great crew. And I mean, that love was in the air was just, it was, it was a joy. It was really, it was really fun, um, and it kind of, it kind of came out of left field in that moment. And I was all right. We'll, we'll jump over and and did it in, you know, last year. And and um, yeah, it was, it was great experience. I mean, you're always learning process, you know. Like, sort of music takes me on a path that that's my soul and my and my spirit. And acting is a part of my play that I enjoy. And and I think that you know, it's. Yeah, it just kind of. I'm. I was always. I'm always learning. You know, I sort of go. Okay, how can I process this? Or how do I? How do we learn at this script? Because my my brain, I can barely remember my um my song sometimes. You know, <laughs> little alone trying to remember someone else's script. <laughs> but it's, but it's did, how much did you learn? Because you played a pilot in the movie. How much yeah. did you actually learn about flying? Because you had to learn enough just to like look like you were actually doing what you're supposed to be doing, right? Did you learn like basic? the basic layout of the cockpit or like, how did you get the flying well, part I mean, down? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't be flying you guys around just yet. You know, I don't know <laughs> if you'd sort of, like, yeah, let's, let's, she can be the captain. Um, but my, my partner, his dad was actually a pilot. And so he used to always say, you know, like share with us like story about, um, you know, when he was flying and, and all this stuff. And now every time I'm like, yes, Bruce, but I too am a pilot. So, yes, um, I played so a pilot in the movie. So, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, two you pilots have in the house. <laughs> Go ahead. Who said it? I was just saying, there's two pilots in the household now, Bruce. So, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> exactly. Respect. You, you, you command respect now. Uh, but, exactly. Um, exactly. Do you, do you have a personally? Do you have a favorite rom com of all time? I mean, I love all rom coms. I'm a I'm a I'm a total total rom com girl. Um, you know, I um and I also love you know that's what she's. Um, I mean, when you were talking about Back to, Back to the Future is my favorite movie of all time as well. So I do love okay. a bit of um a bit of fantasy meets um you know sort of uh, that trilogy is my favorite and uh yeah I mean. All wrong, all, all romantic. Every every rom com you can imagine, I've I've probably watched. They don't make them like they used to. They don't make them like no. they used to. Yeah, and then we say I actually went to film school and I wrote a paper about rom coms. So I, yeah, I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually wrote like I did a whole thing on rom coms and and how they why they declined in quality over the years and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Anyway. Why? Tell me why. Yeah. yeah Give yeah, me yeah. that. What was the summary that you got to? Well, the summary was that essentially studios, but by the the peak was like eight late eighties, early nineties was kind of the peak of like when Harry met Sally and Sleepless in Seattle yeah. and stuff like that. Um, I love Bull Durham, the baseball movie with Susan Sarandon and Tim Robbins, which I think is a a, a rom com. But basically, my my thesis was that the studios quit giving uh, big budgets to these movies, and therefore they didn't attract the big talent. And therefore, they just kind of quit putting as much effort into them. It was my basic thing, you know. I don't want to bash any actors on the air, uh, but no, no, yeah. No. So, um, look, I'm, I mean, it might have worked in my favor. So, um, I'm, yeah. Uh... Well, you know what? I we we had we had Laura Morano on the show about a year ago, um, and she did that. Uh, I think hers was filmed in New Zealand, actually, and um, 
she was saying how how great the experience was with, with Netflix and the accommodations yeah. and the sets and the crews were all really great. So, I mean, I think Netflix is really stepping up their game when it comes to those kinds of movies. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I had a great experience. I found them. I found the whole experience really, um, really fantastic, and and I'm looking forward to to many more projects with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you have such a. Uh, uh, you know, you've been recording music for, for more than 20 years now. You have such a deep catalog of, of well-known hits. Is there a song that you just like hits you every time, even if you sing it a thousand times? Is there like one song that you just like, it just like, you're just back to where you're 17, 18 years old again? I mean, I find, I find that they, you know, as we know, so songs can be such um, teleportals to, you know, to our memories and unlock our, our you know, total visual escapade of our journey on, on the planet. But I, I I find that, you know, they always take on, I always I always recognise, like, with a lyric that I might have written from, you know, 10 years ago, or, like, it, it, all of a sudden the albums feel like, even though it, it, I feel like I'm, you know, just getting started and I feel like I'm kind of going into my best, best, um, best era because it gets more fun as time goes on. You can enjoy it more rather than when you... You know, kind of first start, and you're 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 in such a process. You, um, you know, everything's so emotive because it is you and your heart on the line. And as you get older, you know, you know I'm still in my 30s, but I did start very very young. Um, and and I uh, I find that, you know, I can a, a lyric can hit me just in a moment just out of nowhere. That you know, I might get a memory because I've sung the song maybe so many times or. Or in this moment, I'm just so grateful that this is this moment is happening. Or like, I'm, I'm last year we were doing the Opera House. We did the we did the anniversary tour of the of the first album, and there was numerous moments in that moment that I would look out. It's packed, and people are singing back, and they're having their own journey of their own life soundtrack, and there was a, a palpable connection of just like us, you know, kind of playing that album top to bottom. And there was numerous times my eyes would feel, you know, teary or a song lyric, like there was a song called In My Own Time that I wrote on that record. And I thought, wow, I really respond to that now, like in my own time. I'm in my own time doing my own, you know, uh, you know, you just sort of you respond to different lyrics that will that will make you a bit teary. Separate to my songs, though, Jordan, I'll say um, separate to my song, Both Sides Now uh, by Joni Mitchell will get me every time. I can never oh, not yeah. listen to that. And oh, yeah. For sure. Oh, listen to, if, for sure. You must be not a human if you listen to that song and you don't cry. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. I cry um, uh, every time around Christmas when when River starts to play uh, on the yeah, on the radio. I mean, I did a cover of that um, for my Christmas record. It, that song also just kills me. It's just oh yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous. All right, honestly, love you, Olivia. What was that? Go ahead, Demi. Sorry, I dude. was just about to say, like, can we talk about the eclipse for a second? Did you? Yeah. Is it happening now? It already happened. It already happened. It already happened. So there was an eclipse. I feel like you're a spiritual person, Delta. And like, I feel like, correct me if I'm wrong, you might be into astrology, but the eclipse thing, astrology, I'm very not like, that's something I don't have much info on. Are you, were you one of those people with glasses outside today watching the eclipse? They didn't, did, they didn't get the uh, <laughs> eclipse in Australia, I don't think. Not yet. <laughs> I'm not sure we got it yet. I did. I did think it looked bright outside. But <laughs> we, uh, we we missed out on that, I'm sorry, Demi. Uh, I hope that you do <laughs> get some glasses, maiden wish, and manifest. Wait, the what is your sign? I'm a Scorpio. <gasps> Victoria is a Scorpio. We have one of my friends who's an actor is a Scorpio as well. And and you remind me of her just a little bit. So that's so crazy. Are you well, big into they astrology? They've both been on soap operas. They've both been on soap operas. That's one thing okay. they have in common. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What, what's your star sign? Um, I'm a Cancer. Jordan, where are you? I'm a Leo. And I, I'm, not, I'm not an astrology person at all. I have no idea about anything. So I'm the wrong person. But Demi, Demi really uh, <laughs> enjoys it. Um, yeah. Demi will re we'll read your... We'll read your palm, I guess. Oh my God. Yeah. Are you, would you say you have like any like cool spiritual practices? I know like just being an artist and like just everything can be like a wild ride. Is there anything that you've, that you've done 
what kind of claims would you have done to just kind of keep yourself together during the, the craziness I think that maybe your life has right now? I think, um, you know, I think you can never overlook the simple things, you know, in life. I think that, that all the basics are there for a reason and the cliches are there for a reason. I think that um, you, you know, sort of just your you, good health and well-being it comes to just everything in moderation and, like, I, except for coffee, which must be at all times of the day. Um, you give me both. Uh, coffee is a, is a caffeine bean, so. Wait, how many coffees did yeah, you have today? I mean, our day is over. It's only I'm here. This is probably my second. This is only my second, though. So normally it's it, it, it is 10 a.m. But yeah, it's 10 a.m. Um, so still got a long way so to go. So you're gonna be like on number five by seven, right? It's definitely possible. It depends. Depends. Depends oh, what kind oh, of day oh. we're in. Today. Mm. We're in, we're in. Yeah, we have festivals coming up in the UK. Um, so we have to do our shows and um and bring them together and. And um, we have a lot of projects on the on the horizon, so we're just just rock and rolling, just rock and rolling over here with many a coffee. Yeah, uh, Delta. I know you've you spent some, some time in the UK, and um, and uh, and and the and the new singles taking off in the UK. When a song yes. hits in different in a different country, is there like a okay, we need to go to that country and do media there and do concerts and do like shows or. Or do you, or does that even affect it? Like, if you get a hit in the UK, or do you have to like take a trip and and put in FaceTime there? How does that work? I think you can do whatever you want, really. I think, um, you know, if you if you if you can uh, pull it together, and of course, like I I am so grateful the UK is so good to me throughout my life with music, and um, we had our European tour last year, and and um, and just. You know, I'm I'm heading back there now in June, and then um, it's just yeah, you just kind of go over when when it's time to have new music. And yes, Hearts on the Run has been they've been so good. Um, Radio Two, and we did this BBC orchestra performance in February, where um, you know you, you get to perform with the orchestra and and make the you know turn the songs into an orchestral version, which was really fun. Um, but yeah, I'm all about the the kind of the the, the new song and uh, and then we you know just go you go over whenever you can really or whenever you whenever's in the schedule that you, you can pull it together. It's really up to you. Yeah. you can paint anything. I mean, you guys can work out. I'm sure by speaking to many artists right now, there's no one way to do any of this right now. It's a good tip. That's a good tip. Like do do it. What makes you feel comfortable? What's good for your workflow? What's good for your mental health? Totally. 100%. Totally. Hundred percent. Yeah. You yeah. Know. Yeah. yeah. And it's, and it's uh, hearts, hearts on the run. I'm assuming it, is there going to be an album in the fall or in the summer or what's, what's coming up in terms of new music? Yeah, I, um, I, what, what can you, yes. what can, what can you say? What can you say? Yeah. Oh, I, 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 I can say that just sort of, um, just sort of focusing on hearts on the run at the moment. And then, um, and then, pull together the rest of the songs. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> moving on, moving on. Gotcha, gotcha. We, when we, know the drill. When we know the drill. Die. We've been there. We've been there. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, we got, we got, um, there's lots of new music. It's just really, you know, it's sort of, I always think new songs are like a little horse race or something. You know, you sort of see how long they stay in, in our, in your, um, and you see which one stays with you, and then you go, "Oh, this one's staying with me. I'm still gravitating to this to this song." Or if songs kind of drop off that you thought were songs you really wanted, so I'm just watching my observations on how I respond to my own songs. Okay, cool, good answer. I've never, yeah. I need to have a girly moment with you because, and I I have had to do this a few times on the show because, I mean, first of all, you're just glowing, right? And as oh, you know, no. as a girl, it's really like I didn't pull myself together as well tonight. No, so thank literally you. Literally glowing, and it's like, but every day I see a new product in the market, a new, a new moisturizer. Everyone's doing totally different skincare. It's like, what kind of new products, like that you are just banning over right now, that you can tell everybody about? Like, give us your secret. I mean, I mean, um, I, I am a very proud Revlon girl. I have been for about. Uh, three years and um, we are a, a great team in sort of our messaging of like living boldly and when we sort of we work campaigns together and I um, I love their products because I get sent them I am with with my team Revlon I get to dive into many product products so my entire makeup collection is Revlon right now 
Awesome. Do you get to try things because you're part of the team? Do you get to try things before they're available to the public? Like, do they do that for you? I do, actually. (laughs) I do. It's a lot of fun. And you'd be like, oh, this one's really great. Or this one's... So, um, yeah, I I really have enjoyed it. Again, it's been about three years. And, um, and, yeah, they're just great. They're great, great, timeless, authentic. You know, I think in this moment, there's so many options, like you mentioned, Demi. I find that I gravitate to brands that I have have had a trusted uh, space. 100%. Speaking of Revlon, though, yeah. the Revlon blow dry brush, I yep. live by. That is my everyday. That's all I use. Your hair looks just that beautiful. Oh, I'm not you. referencing it. Your hair looks gorgeous. Oh, thank you. It's the Revlon brush. It's literally the Revlon um, blow drying brush. That's all you need. Shout out Revlon. I love that. I love that. I feel I feel really left out, but I, I trust well, the Rev One brush is as good as advertised. Well, you have some what do you hair do? Hair. I do. I yes. do have. I do. I do have. You know, uh, when I was a kid, it my hair my hair stood straight up. It was like like this. So yes. yeah, I could I could have used the Revlon brush when I was nine. That would have been really helpful. Uh, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, um. You know, I'm sure you're sick about ask, answering questions about going out on your own independently as far as releasing music. But what I'm interested in is not about like the experience of being independent. I'm interested in the process of now. Do you feel like you have more freedom over your what music you release, how it's released, what kind of arrangements? Like what 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 advantages have you experienced so far of being independent? I think what I have really enjoyed is that I, mean, I, I was I've been I was with Sony for twenty years and I loved every minute of my you know uh, team and I think when COVID happened I tended to I, I think I just understood okay it's a change we've got to you know moving on like the world has changed gotten really fast. And everybody is directly connected. And I think I just recognized that there was really big shift. So, and I'd always been a captain of my own boat, so to speak. Um, and I think that it just had sped up and I had a great team around me that we just kind of were doing our own thing. And it just sort of was a natural progression that I moved into where it was, I had wonderful relations with, with great um, people that I that I, I love at at Sony, where I worked for so long, um, but there was a shift in what I wanted next, and I think that it's been really incredible, and I'm so proud of sort of everything we've been able to accomplish in the past couple of years, and uh, we're kind of firing cylinders, and it's it's very busy, and um, yeah, I wouldn't change it. It's great. Do you uh, bounce any? <laughs> Any ideas off your fiance in terms of like, are you like you ever play demos for him in the car or anything like that? Like, how how, how does that I really? Mean, yeah, I mean, he is so warm in here. He is. Um, I mean, of course, I speak to him about everything. So um, we are a team, and I wouldn't. Um, I you know, it would be impossible for him not to be completely immersed into. Um, you know, our trains of thought as a team and he produces the records with me. You know, he plays every single instrument. He's a total master of, um, you know, instrumentation and, and my ability to throw ideas and him catch them in a really, like, calm and organised way is is, 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 is is really fun. Please tell us the love story. Speaking of rom-com, like, we're in this right now. Tell us how you guys met and how did you know, like, he was it like or not did you not know what's the story <laughs> um Girl talk. Matt and I met no 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 we Matt and I met through music and um you know we we were playing together as in he he was my uh, guitarist and came and joined when I was on a I had a tour in 2016 and and um and, you know so the rest is history <laughs> that's our rom-com we might have to work on the rom-com together team <laughs> What about both of you? What do I need to know here about? Like, let me know the love lives. Let me know that. Um, um, Jordan I'm loves single. to tell our story. I'm single, and <laughs> Demi Demi keeps it close to her chest. Oh Demi, goodness! Right. Yeah. 
Will I? Uh, will yeah. she, she, she? That just put it this way. She she has a little bit of a long I distance have a crush. going on. So no, I have a I have a crush. I have a crush. Yeah. Yeah, Is yeah. he in Australia by any chance? Or are they in Australia? Do you want to come over to no. Australia? <laughs> I will definitely hit you up if I'm in Australia. <laughs> Speaking of, you guys have those little animals called Quakers, right? Quakers, yeah. Quaker? Can you tell us Quakers. about that? Because I actually have a, a Quaker stuffed animal, and I didn't know. I thought it was a beaver for a long time. <laughs> and then I know, yeah, yeah but it, it is a native animal to Australia. Can you tell us about that fun fact? Oh, hey, um, I'm not sure to be like that. zoologist here. I would have to Google myself, um, but I do know that they are gorgeous <laughs> little animals. And they're funny because I literally said last night, as I was falling asleep, I saw on a commercial, I'm like, oh, that's so cute. They have little quokkas on there. It was the first time I said that word in like years. And here you are saying, what about quokkas? And I'm like, that is so funny. <laughs> well, I, I don't know the station. history. But I, will, um, but I will tell you that there are some um, men animals in Australia. Um, but, you know, generally speaking, they're all pretty friendly. So. Yeah. All, in America, we see these terrifying kangaroo videos of, like, people getting attacked by these jacked, muscular kangaroos. So, they're not jacked. Yeah. Yeah, they are. They are. Um, some of those videos are real. They, they you know, they're boxes. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had... Um, uh, an encounter with a wild animal in, in, you know, like, are, are you, are you, are you a nature person? That's the good question. Are you a nature person? Yes, I, I am a nature person. Of course. Um, I, uh, you know, I grew up in the trees, so to speak. So I grew up out of the city and, um, and, you know, you definitely would get the prize of a lifetime when a big huntsman would, you know, be there in the morning, ah! <laughs> you, definitely, you know, they're friendly spiders, let's be clear, but they are large. And they do, yeah. and I'm still, you, you do as an Australian, you know, you get, you, if you grew up a little bit out of the sea, you do tend to sort of, if you wake up in the middle of the night and you might have come across one that's accidentally, you know, found its way into into you know, one of the corners of the doors or something, definitely, um, I mean, there's many talk videos and many that people show the, the gigantic huntsmen that tend to, make surprises. I, I remember I was once in the car, the car had been outside and um, we were driving on the freeway and it literally came up through the vent and it was just like, boom, 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 we like, mm. <laughs> it sounds terrifying. No, that's a no go. That's a no go. Australia is terrifying. Australia is terrifying. Yeah. See, see I, I, let me see a bit more. Yeah, so new, give me us to deal with like rats and cockroaches, you know, on the street in New York, but that's that's nothing. That's nothing. That's nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, these big, these things that's going to hurt you. The little guys, the little huntsmen's are not going to hurt you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Well, uh, <laughs> we need to let you go, Delta. But thank you so much for joining us on the show. Congrats on the new single. Uh, we hope to see new music down the line shows you got, I, I'm sure you've got a, some shows coming up in the summer. Anything you want to like shout out that's coming up. You want people to look out for. Oh, well, we're looking forward to going over to Marty Hoopler in the UK and just getting excited as well. At some point soon, right? We, the last trip we did with the Backstreet Boys, uh, was just an absolute epic adventure. So I'm looking forward to getting back there and, and doing some shows. Speaking of Backstreet Boys real quick is, Kevin Richardson as dreamy in person as he appears on camera. Listen, John, they're Backstreet Boys. So, um, yeah, you know, you know, and, and you know what's cool is that his wife was even cooler. Like she was as cool as they go. Nice, <laughs> she nice. was, she was like cool, like cool girl, just like Kristen's gorgeous. And they have like the most beautiful family. So yeah, Kevin and his family are dreamy. I remember when I, when I was younger, that was like, everyone loved Kevin. Everyone loved Kevin. Yeah. All right. All right, Delta. Let's give her on Howie. Oh, Howie. Yeah. Howie's Howie. a great guy. Howie, Howie had the cool glasses. Gotta love the Howie glasses. Yeah. 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 All right, Delta. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you later. Appreciate it. You guys say cheers. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> BTS. See you later. Bye. Thanks, guys. Nice meeting Bye. you. Nice Bye. to meet you too. Bye. Bye. Bye.
All right. Shout out Delta. We love an Australian accent. My goodness, I could be heard like talking for days. Yeah. Uh, and I, I guess it has it. been like three years yeah. since we had an Australian on the show. It's been a while since we, Sheesh. you know. And just a little behind the scenes, it's right now, it's daylight savings time in Australia is starting. And we like had to do all sorts of math to make sure we were coordinated on the right time zone because Demi and I are three hours away. And then, and then, uh, you know, uh, Sydney is 12 hours ahead of New York, but now it's actually 13, I guess, or I don't know, but we, we, we got it done. We got it done. And Demi is at a sidewalk, uh, tea house. In, uh, <laughs> where, where in are you? Actually? What part, what, you're in Brooklyn. Brooklyn yeah. Bring it back yeah, yeah. some memories for me. Bring it back. Some oh memories. my God. Me and Jordan used to link up in Brooklyn. We yeah. Used to, um, before the podcast was like really a thing. We used to, yeah. <laughs> this was the spot. Oh, Jordan, remember we used to have like little meetings when we first heard the podcast. Yeah. And like we Just went to, like, to these cafes. Some yeah, we would go to cafes and like the like, hey, Jordan. So how do we do a podcast? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, I guess that's it. Um, as always, Go to popdust.com for the latest in pop culture and music news. Follow me on Instagram at Jordan Edward Studio. Follow Demi at Demi underscore Ramos. Check out our past episodes on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. Until next time, we'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs>